Hello, boys and girls of Nat Geo, and welcome to our afternoon game drive. And we are coming to you live from the Maasai Mara Triangle in Kenya. And out in the background there, you can see those big, huge animals, and we call those buffaloes. Look at that huge number of buffaloes there, and I welcome you very much. And my name is David, and with me on camera today is Manu. Manu, good afternoon. Are you excited for the kids today? We are very happy to have you on board. Remember, we request you along the drive to ask us questions through your parents or guardians, writing us emails on notyourkids at worldearth.tv. Should you also have nice comments, you can also send them through the same. I got some surprise for you. What about that, boys and girls? These are two lionesses. Sometimes we say lions, but if it's females, we say lionesses. And casting the final controversy is very nice. And it's very normal because lions belong to a group of animals that we call cats. And just like the cats I'm sure you all have at home, they tend to sleep a lot. And that's why these two lionesses, you see them sleepy, sleepy. And what you see that one doing is just like panting or breathing. It's better if you say panting than breathing. Because it's a bit warm here where we are. And it's about 30 degrees Celsius and 86 degrees Fahrenheit. That is quite warm. Now, we have shown you two cuts. We might show you some different two other animals all the way in South Africa. Look at that. I have got a very lovely sighting here of the elephants trying to have something to eat this afternoon. You can see that it's quite a very small group there. We can see a mother and a little one. A very, very good afternoon and welcome to the beginning of the kids show. I am Sydney Fumulani Mikosi. I am traveling with Dave who is my camera operator. We are going to try by all means and give you the best wildlife experience ever. Kids, don't forget to ask your parents to send us questions on netyourkids at wildearth.tv. So you can see that these elephants are looking, uh, they are feeding on this dry vegetation because this vegetation to us, it looks dry, but this elephant knows that this bush is not dry at all. It is just drying on the outside, but Inside, there is still quite a lot of nutrients by these trees. So look at that ear. If you look at the elephant's ear, it is like an African map. When drawing the map of Africa, it is like an elephant ear. Amazing. So the elephants can be able to eat quite a lot. So they can spend 18 to 20 hours just feeding and only relax two to four hours a day. There is a bird there next to the elephant you can see. This is what is called a fork-tailed drongo. You can see the tail is like a fork. This bird is walking with these elephants, catching the insects when the elephants are feeding. As they are moving, insects will be flying up. So now let's uh, go to one of my colleagues, Tristan, who's got a lovely spotted cat. We do indeed. It's very exciting because we're with one of our favorite kitties that we see out here. It is Hosanna and well, you can see he's having a lazy day, having a bit of a stretch and having a bit of a sleep. As Sydney said, my name is Tristan on camera. I've got Senzo and it is a very, very, very big welcome to all of you that have joined us this afternoon. Remember to ask lots of questions by telling your parents and all your older siblings to send them through on natiokids.wildest.tv or at wildest.tv, should I say. 
there. But now you'll see that this leopard, he's going to be very sleepy. It's because the weather is terrible today. The weather is, is cold, it's windy, there's lots of rain that's falling. And so it's not nice weather at all for an animal to be too active. Now you also notice that his tummy's quite full. And so those kind of things of being full and bad weather means that I'm pretty sure Hosanna is going to have a really lazy afternoon and he's going to sit close to this tree where he can stay out of the rain a little bit and he's going to have the best nap that he possibly can and so he's going to lie on his side like this and he'll probably just rest nicely and he can rest kind of quite out in the open because there's no sun today that's going to make him kind of too warm and so it's the perfect spot for him just to have spend his day and kind of really take it easy. He was fortunate last night because he managed to find himself some food and that's why his tummy is quite full and so he's eaten during the night last night and this morning and that means that he's now kind of ready for a proper good nap where he can sleep away this horrible weather in the hope that it will go by the end of this evening hopefully we won't have this rain anymore so it's very very good that he has managed to find food it means he doesn't have to worry too much about trying to find it in this horrible kind of conditions now i believe a lot of you are happy to see him we're all happy to see him he's our favorite cat and we see him quite regularly these days i mean we often see him you know through most of the week but it's always nice when he makes an appearance for the afternoon show for you and comes out because he really is the best kind of cat to watch he's playful and he's got lots of youth and exuberance and that means that he's you know a great catch to watch because he's just often quite busy obviously this afternoon he's quite sort of tired and just taking a bit of a rest but he can be quite a kind of handful and can run around all over the place Right, now while our cat is very sleepy and we hope that he'll wake up soon, it sounds like Sydney's got something that's far more active than what Hosan is. You can see that the elephants, they are busy trying to debug all the small pieces of wood here from the bush. Look at that. So the elephants can be able to talk to us, make use of the ears and the trunks. When the elephants are not happy, it's very easy to read because they are going to swing the head and flap the ears. Sometimes they even throw the trunk, which is an easy communication. So these animals can be able to dig very big holes. Look at what he's doing, that one. He is trying to dig there. It means he is trying to get something from under the ground. Look at that. Look at that. So you can see that these legs, they look very much big and they use them for walking and in order for digging. Elephants can be able to create their own small dams, which can end up becoming very big dams in future. So where this elephant has just dug now, when the rain comes, <laughs> it's going to collect water. Uh, Brenda, this is the first animals I am seeing today here, but uh, considering the weather here by Juma at the moment, I am hoping to see quite a lot of different animals. And these elephants, I'm just seeing one, two, three, it's just five of them at the moment. So it's quite a very small head. So you can see it's very much difficult at this stage for the animals to get camouflaged. So they cannot easily hide because the trees don't have quite a lot of leaves to hide them. So elephants, you can easily find them because from a distance you can hear them pushing down and breaking the trees. And you can also smell them. So the body smell of the elephants, you can pick it up from very far. So you can see that the wind is too much. The trees there where these elephants are, the wind is just blowing. So now let's go to the Masai Mara where Brent is having some sleeping lions. Maybe they're gonna wake up for you to see. Let's see what is going to happen. Well, even with a lot of wind, you will notice elephants don't get very worried by the wind. And it to be the same case with the lions here. Here we are in the Masai Mara Triangle. It's very quiet. As you can see, the wind is very still. And these lionesses are just enjoying the nap. And as I told you earlier, 
Just like the cats you have at home, lions also tend to sleep the same. Of all the cats we have in Africa, lions sleep most. Sometimes we have made jokes and called lions the kings of the jungle because lions do not have as many enemies. If these cats were cheetahs or leopards, maybe they would not be sleeping as much, but lions are not bothered by many other animals or other predators. The bush they are sleeping under is called orange leaf croton, and we are going to show you those leaves. You look at those leaves carefully. You see the color of some of the leaf, like that one there? That leaf looks like the color of an orange. That's how the oranges look like here in Africa. I don't know how they look like back home, but that's why we call this particular bush orange-leafed croton. Now, this bush has very special properties. Flies do not love this bush. And for that reason, these lions are so clever, they'll come and lie under this bush because they know the big flies will not disturb them. Remember, boys and girls, to keep asking us questions or should you have any comments, you may send through your parents on email, worldearth, kid, not your kids, at worldearth.tv or through your guardians. Lions, we say they are carnivores and saying they are carnivores, they eat meat. Unlike the elephants that were with Sydney, which will eat grass and other stuff that we call vegetarians or herbivores, these ones here, will only eat meat. For example, zebras, or wildebeest, or any type of impala, or antelope. Look at that paw, and see how big it is. On clear days, if you see lions walking in an open area that's not covered by grass, you can see clearly how a paw of a lion looks like. And you look at the base, it got three lobes. So there are times when we do a bushwalk, or a walking safari, we look at those three lobes at the back of that pole and we can tell it is definitely a cat. But if it's a different animal, for example, a hyena, instead of three lobes, it, may, it will have two. Same case from the back to the front one. And you can see the poles of these cats or lions are not covered by far. Rosaline, you sometimes will see flies on the eyes of the lions and they tend to suck any liquid that like, you know, like the tears we have like human beings is always something that they would always want to suck and that way they feed themselves and to a lion that's an advantage because these flies tend just to clean their eyes. That's the only reason sometimes you will see flies on the eyes of the lions. Sometimes you also see a few of the flies. For example, if you take almost on the elbow of that one there, not as many, but these are very small flies that do not bother the lions. But other bigger flies, for example, the sister flies or say mosquitoes, they will not come here. As I said earlier, this bush is very good because it keeps them away. If you look carefully on the mouth of that, oops, you can see the whiskers clearly, just like the cats. You see the whiskers there, boys and girls? Kathy, <laughs> I, 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 I do not know, but maybe if you're lucky, this one's just licking herself. We see the one licking herself there. I highly doubt lions will be ticklish because, oops, look at how that one is turning, Kathy. It has been sleeping on one side, so just tossing to sleep on the other side. I highly doubt, and unlike human beings where our bodies are not covered by far, lions, Kathy, as you can see there, they're covered by far. And I got a feeling they might be, you know, they might not be ticklish. Well, I'm going to remain here with my lionesses for a few more minutes, but I think Sydney got a surprise for you. I have got a very big surprise. You can see the surprise is not yet open. It is still in the box. Now it's open. Look at that. <laughs> so I've got one of the lovely cats there 
And this cat seems to be looking at something. So I'm not too sure which cat is this. My apology for the pole. The weather is promising some rain, so I've got my roof today. Look at that. You can see that the ears are concentrating. And I saw a decker just now. Maybe that decker is what is fascinating this cat at the moment. So here we might see something interesting. I haven't seen a kill for quite a long time. So hopefully uh, this afternoon I might be lucky. <laughs> yes, it looks like Tandy when looking at this color. To me it was like, maybe it's Tandy, but not too sure. I know that the viewers, when it comes to the identification of these animals, they are much more experienced than I am. Deep. Uh, good afternoon, all stations. Uh, this is Sydney. I am by Philemon's Deep with Tandy. So you can see that uh, this cat is up to something. So I've got to wait here and see what is fascinating Tandy at the moment. Uh, good afternoon, all stations. This is Sydney. I have got Tandy by Philemon's Deep. So you can see that uh, the cats, such as the leopard, still when it's dry, they can be able to camouflage. I'm standing by, ascend. Uh, I've got Tandy just by the Philemon's Deep. Okay, copy that. You're more than welcome to join. Thank you. So I am now going to keep following Tandy as I can see that she is heading towards the dry riverbed and I don't want to lose her. I want to keep this sighting. So now let's go to Tristan who's got Hosanna at the moment. Well, yes, we do have Tandy's younger brother, who's, well, not like Tandy at all so far this afternoon. He's being very, very relaxed and is just having a really good nap at this stage. I don't think he's going to really do too much for now. As it gets a little bit kind of darker and starts to kind of get into the night, we might see him wake up and start to move. But for now, he's going to just rest. The weather's getting really quite cold now. We're starting to see... A lot of rain coming in and it's getting harder and harder and so I think it's going to be quite a sort of miserable afternoon and I wouldn't be surprised if he actually curl up in underneath where the rain won't hit him because if the rain gets too hard then you'll find the leopards don't really like it and they'll try and find somewhere where they're able to kind of hide away a little bit so they'll put their heads inside a bush because the cats don't really like water it's not their favorite thing so when it rains you'll find that he'll be a little bit kind of uncomfortable and you'll try and find a better spot to lie in so, Brenda, you want to know how old this leopard is? Well, Brenda, that means that you're not really familiar with our leopard. So let me tell you who exactly this is and who Tandi kind of is in relation to him. So this is a little leopard called Hosanna. He's a young male. So he was born in February 2016. So he's two years and eight months now. Um, He's getting quite old, and well, it feels like he's getting old because it just feels like the other day that he was a little cub, um, and so he's growing very, very quickly. Now, Tandy, who is his older sister, like I said, she's 12 years old, and so you would think, well, how can she be his older sister? Well, it's quite easy, is that they have the same mother. So both Hosanna and Tandy had a mother called Karula, and Karula was a very successful female. She had lots of different litters in this area and was probably one of the most successful females in raising cubs that we've probably 
probably that I know of definitely and I've spent quite a lot of time in the bush and so she really was quite amazing and her first litter that she had so her first cubs was Tundi and her sister Shadow and Tundi basically has lived on the fringe of her mother's territory for quite some time then when Hosanna was born which is Karula's last cubs unfortunately she disappeared when he was about a year old and that meant that you know he had to try and find his way at a year old which is very young for a leopard to look after itself normally the moms will only leave them when they're about 14 months to two years so somewhere in that region and so it was very young he had to learn very quickly to be able to survive and what happened then is that his sister his older sister Tandi she came from the fringe of where Karula's territory was and she snuck in here and so she is now into exactly where Karula's territory was that's her kind of territory now and so they are related they just have different fathers because of the time frame so there was not a male leopard that was dominant for that entire time <clears throat> and so the father of um, Tandi is a different father than the father of Hosanna but they are still related and sometimes they even bump into each other which is quite nice it's always interesting to watch the way that they interact with one another and so that's who he is he's, he's like I say he's two years eight months old to answer your question really but at least we've given you a bit of background history on who he is and he really is probably one of the most favorite cats out of this entire area and it's not just because of who his mom is obviously his mom was very famous because of how good she was at being able to raise cubs but it was also because when this little cat started to grow up he had a sister and they were very playful and they used to be around all the time and then he unfortunately lost his mom and then his sister also disappeared and so he had to live right by himself and he's very playful and he's got lots and lots of energy normally and he runs around all over the place and he's really kind of one of those cats that makes you just want to spend more and more time with him so he's a he's an epic epic cat and we love spending time with him and, and thankfully um, he has decided to stick around over the last few months there was a period in in this year where around sort of May where he disappeared for a while he went off onto another area and he stayed there until about july and then he arrived back in this area and has then been here ever since and almost daily we get to see him which is so nice so it's really good to have him he's not yet a dominant male which means that he might still have to be or move on or be chased away by the big dominant male that we have in this area but he is growing by the day and and so far his dad who is the dominant male is tolerant of him which means that he allows this young male to walk around here and so far so good we're not having any sort of nasty sort of fights between them they're quite accepting of each other and that means that this little male so far is staying in our area which is very cool because we hope that secretly hope even though it's probably not the best thing for genetics it's we secretly hope that he'll stay around because of how beautiful he is one and two just the way that he is in terms of his character so hopefully you know we'll see that it's going to be a bit of a while until we kind of see whether or not that happens normally male leopards will only really start to dominate a territory when they reach about four and a half five years old but this guy might because he was left a little bit earlier potentially could have that drive to start establishing himself a little bit earlier we are already starting to see him scent mark which means that he goes along and he sprays his urine and he's trying to establish himself a little territory of his own and it'll be interesting to see if he starts to call and if he starts to make a little bit of a noise around this area it will be very very interesting so i'm hoping that he will be our dominant male leopard going forward his dad is starting to get a little bit older and the timing might be perfect for him to take over from dad as dad starts to kind of lose condition as he gets to sort of you know 13 years old so hosanna will be getting just into his prime and that might be the perfect timing for him to come in and take over but for now he's not doing any of that he's just sleeping very comfortably he's not getting any sun on him so he doesn't have to worry at all Andy, in all likelihood, probably not. Um, when Tandi and Hosanna come together, they probably don't know that they are related. They there might be a scent. I mean, we, obviously, it's difficult for us to know these things, but these animals have incredible senses, much better than what ours is. And they've got this organ in the roof of their mouth called the organ of Jacobson. And that organ can tell a lot about the smell of another leopard, particularly their urine. And so maybe they can work out that they had the same mom. I don't think so, though. I think it's more a case that when these two meet, 
date they're not really that aggressive to one another because Tandi probably still sees him as a young male and remember Tandi has probably seen him a lot more than you know we even realize and we know that they've spent a lot of time together we, particularly when he left his war well, and his mom left him so when he was about a year old he followed Tandi around a lot and tried to kind of you know to try and get meals out of her and 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 kept kind of looking for her and so you know they've been around each other quite often um, and that's probably why she's not too worried and also now he's gotten a lot bigger than her which makes it quite difficult for her to even try and chase him away anyway talking about Tandi she is still on the move and I wonder if she's busy trying to look for food You can see that Tandi is now on a move, and not too sure where exactly she's going. She's just going all directions. You can see now she's changing, going to the uh, western side of the reserve. And she looks very beautiful today, but she's looking hungry, I can promise you. So she just easily got disappeared. I must just have to keep following so that we can have a better sighting. So kids, uh, don't forget to ask your parents to send us questions on net your kids at wildearth.tv so you can see that uh, this cat is Brenda, Tandi is one of those uh, old females here in the reserve. In terms of the years, uh, Tandi, I'm not too sure, but she might be maybe running about uh, eight years. She is about 13 years. 13 years. So she's now walking in between the bushes. It's very, very much difficult to see her. She's getting very camouflaged. But I can see that she is on a mission. This cat is going somewhere. <laughs> so maybe she's gonna take us to where the small one is, Kalamba. It will be very great seeing Kalamba. It's one of those cats I haven't seen for quite a long, long time. So you can see that she is now going very fast, but with her concentration uh, much more towards the western side. So the wind is getting too much at the moment, so it's quite very difficult for me uh, to hear from far. But you can see what's happening. You can see that she's on a mission going towards the western side. So this cat is now about 12 years. She's just about to celebrate her birthday. She is now uh, going much more towards 13 years. So now let's go to the Masai Mara where David has got some lions. Maybe the lions are much more active at the moment by the Masai Mara. Now, boys and girls, I want to tell you something also about the lions. When we started the show with me, we saw these two lionesses, which are still very sleepy, which is very typical of the lions. Then you saw elephants with Sydney, and then leopard with Tristan, and maybe another leopard now with Sydney. And when we started also with me, we also saw the buffaloes. Man, who are those buffaloes? Let me just first show you the buffaloes before I continue with my story. Sorry about my head. Now, you see that huge herd of buffaloes. Those could be very similar to what you'd call the bisons. But here we call them the Cape Buffaloes or the African Buffaloes. Sometimes we make a joke and we call them the wild, our wild cows. 
Now, my story was going to, in Africa, we got five animals that we call the Big Five. And I'll tell you, boys and girls, you're very lucky because of the Big Five, you have seen the Big Four. We got so many people who love coming to Africa to look or to see if they're lucky to get the Big Five. So you'd imagine just from your homes, you already got the four of the Big Five, which are, of course, the buffaloes, the leopard, the elephants, and the lions. Aren't you lucky? Behind those buffaloes, if you look carefully, there's some other animals that are black and white. Not very clear because they're quite a distance from where I am, but we call them zebras, and I'm sure you know zebras, black and white, or white and black. Now, we'll come back to our lions, and then I'll explain or keep talking about them because those are the closest that we have from where we are. So that's what I was talking about, the big five, where we have the buffaloes, elephants, lions and the leopard. You only need one more today and you're going to complete the list of the big five and I want you to think what could be the fifth of the big five I'm talking about. I want you to crack your head, see whether you can know which one it is and through your parents or your guardians send an email to us uh, not your kids at worldearth.tv and tell me which could be the fifth animal that makes the big five. So these lions might continue sleeping there for maybe another half an hour or one hour. Thomas, if these lions will wake up now, we always see them go into trunks of big trees and they just grab the trees with their claws and you just see them clawing or just digging uh, on the trunk of the tree. And I want to show you what I'm talking about. Um, you see like a big tree like that one, Thomas? Yes, that tree there is a fig tree. And I am not sure, you see that part that looks like the back is worn out, a little bit looks a bit reddish. Maybe those were lions, maybe not. But what they do, you'll see them just like how you see cats, you know, trying to clothe the coaches back home or your seat. That's exactly, Thomas, what the lions do. And you'll always see them stretching and going like that on trunks of trees and then they go like that and then you see them digging like that. They got nothing to do with that tree but what they're trying to do is just sharp, to sharpening their clothes. Now these two lionesses here belong to a pride that we call the sausage tree pride. When you see females together you'll call that a pride. That group of lionesses is called a pride. And if you see males together, you'll call that a coalition. Now, this particular pride here has five females with him, and it's got two small caps that I've been looking for, and I'm continuing to look, find out where they are. Now, it's called the sausage tree pride. And just like the tree that I showed you, the sausage tree is similar to that. And because we know these lions or lionesses very well, we have always seen them many times climbing that particular tree and they will climb on top of it to get some shade or if they got so many flies on the ground and they get irritated by the flies they will climb on the trees to keep away from the flies now that one particular type of tree they love climbing it and that tree is called the sausage tree and that's how we ended up naming this particular pride the sausage tree pride if you look carefully on the end of the tail, you see the black. The black found it, and when they're walking on the grass, you'll always see the lionesses or lions flicking their tail up. And as I said, this particular pride has two small cubs, and once it raises it is tail up, if the cubs, because they'll be too short and getting lost in the grass, what they keep looking for is the tail that the mother keeps flicking up. And we call that the follow me sign that tail you see there. So you can see the tall grass there. So if they rise and start walking and they got young ones or even among the adults, if the grass is too tall and there's the, the lead one, so what will happen is they'll use that black tail as 
they follow me some Rashida, good trial, good trial. Hippo is not a bad guess. I want to thank you very much for trying. But keep trying. Rashida said a hippopotamus. And I said the five, or the big five. One is only what you're remaining to see. And Rashida said the hippo, not quite, but very close. It's very close to that because somehow it's a bit similar. But the weight, in terms of the weight also, but you're very close. Keep trying to tell me of the big five of Africa, what are we missing? We got the leopard, we got the elephant, we got the lions, we got the leopard. But I can tell you before the end of the drive, we'll definitely tell you the fifth of the big five. Oh, Francis, very well done, Francis. A very big hand from David. Well done, Francis. Well done. Yes, it is a rhino. Excellent. And hopefully, let's all cross our fingers that at one point today before we end the show we might see a rhino but Francis very well done for saying it's a rhino and I'm sure all of you kids now know the big five of Africa rhino, elephant, buffalo, leopard and the lions so what we're showing you now it's the beautiful Mara and that is the savanna and you can see how beautiful it is maybe later on the drive we might be lucky to show you some wildebeest that you always feel all that area you see there as they feed on the grass. Now, let me take you again all the way to South Africa to one of the big five. Indeed, David, with one of the probably the most beautiful members of the Big Five. I suppose it's an argument that can be had depending on who you are. It will depend whether you like lions, leopards, buffalo, elephants, or the rhino. But for me, the most beautiful of them all is this leopard. And he really is kind of one of the best looking leopards we have out here. Yes, I suppose he's still a young male, which means that he hasn't got any scars on his ears or face yet. He's still got a perfect kind of clean little face. And that's why I suppose he looks as good as he does. But he also has the most beautiful orange colored eyes and his coat and general kind of body condition is also in really good nick so he's doing just fine and like i say it's always a joy to kind of spend time with him now he, you can see he's kind of sat up a little bit he had his head up for us for a little while watching us but he's decided he's gotten a little tired rashida do we get ammo leopards here in the sabi sands i'm afraid not so that is a leopard that you only get in a very specific part of the world N none of them occur in in africa well i mean none of those habitats are in africa um so you know unfortunately we don't see them if they were here they would probably in all likelihood not really get very far and the reason why i say that is because they're a much smaller leopard than these particular savanna cats and they would probably in all likelihood the big leopards that we see here they would probably do a lot of damage to an animal leopard and probably kill them off quite quickly so they occur in a very specific part of the world they not none of them are in africa um unfortunately but it's a tough leopard to go and see that that's not something that you know everybody has seen and, and definitely not something that will be easily found by anybody so you know you'd have to do a lot of kind of going to very specific locations in order to see them and have a lot of luck before you'll actually get them it's really not one of those animals that just is easily kind of what would you say easily discoverable or easily seen where even where it occurs so you know unfortunately not it would be nice like i say if we did have them now i can see something in the distance that's moving but i can't make a oh, it's a giraffe it's very very far away in the distance and i don't think we'll get a view of it we've got our rain covers on because it's starting to rain quite a bit it's not very pleasant out here at all the rain is kind of picked up the wind is picked up and it's sort of whipping around all over the place and it's part of the reason why Hosanna woke up just now is because unfortunately our rain roof makes a bit of a noise when it's really windy and so he just kind of opened his eyes just to see what was going on now Senza I don't know maybe we can get these giraffe let's just try and reposition slightly and see if Senza can show you where they are it's a bit of a tricky one because they're in a small little gap and I've got to bring the car around because I don't have the ability to come well, Senza doesn't have the ability to shoot out through the side of the cars because of the flaps that are down but all the way in that section over there somewhere is some giraffe that are moving around now let's see if we can spot them oh there it is you see its head moving 
you can just see the light coloration of the head that is kind of moving around and you always think that giraffe would be very easy to spot but look at that you can see why spotted patterns and coats make it a lot harder for as to find animals and so much like the leopard with its spots giraffe also have a broken pattern and it too can blend in very well so even though there is a giraffe there not easy to see it you can just see its head moving around a little bit there we go it's popped its head up which is much better and then it's going to walk off deeper into the thicket so i think it's more than just the one there there's another one next to it, yeah, so there we go. So Kirsty, who's in final control, which is where our picture goes to be sent to all of you, says she can see another one next to it, which I'm glad Kirsty can see it because I can't at the moment. It's just very tricky to kind of see them at all. But a oh, little bit up, oh, there it is. Yes, now I see it's nice and clearly. That's very cool to see. So a nice little herd of giraffe that's moving around in the background. They're quite common in this area and, and you know we've seen a lot of them of late which is always nice. It's at this time of the year that we often do see quite a lot of giraffe and the reason why is that it's now around this time that a lot of the trees start to have their first little leaves come out as well as flowers and giraffe being browsers they take advantage of that and so they come through this area and they'll be eating all those tiny new little leaves that are growing because of the rain that we're currently having we've had a bit of rain over the last kind of week and a half and that's all starting these trees out on their resurgence from winter so going from these brown sort of leafless trees to be able to come into the summer months when they're going to be full of green leaves and and it's going to be very pretty out here and unfortunately though in summer if it was summer we probably wouldn't even be able to see that giraffe because all the trees from here to there they might look dead now but all of those are going to get nice bright green leaves come the summer time and so those giraffe would be able to kind of blend in a lot better our leopard is completely not fussed by all of this though he's just sitting having a really good nap and the reason why is because those giraffe are so far away he probably doesn't even know about them you can see this all the way across on the other side you have to come along down into a drainage line and then only up onto this bank and to find him so he's having a good kind of nap he's not too phased by the fact that the giraffe all the way over there and even if they were closer he wouldn't go anywhere near it Iron chest? Uh, no, I don't think so, to be honest with you. I mean, the, the distance between where they are and us is, is massive. Um, I mean, they might have smelt him earlier in the day um, and, and now taken a wider berth, but I don't think so. They certainly don't look like they've seen him. Giraffe are quite a nice species for when um, they see a predator because they'll all stop and stare in that direction. And so you find the whole grouping will come together and everyone stares in the same place. Um, and so you can see those guys are feeding and, and moving about, so they don't look like they're too upset by anything and therefore I doubt that they've smelt or seen Hosanna from where they are. The wind direction is also not quite right. They're a little bit too far to the east. The wind is going in a northerly direction at the moment and so you know it's, just, it's not really the right way. Anyway while the little prince sleeps let's send you back across to Sydney who's having a tough time keeping up with the Queen. So I can see that now Tandy, she is in the middle of a hunt. Now she has just stopped. She's looking for something here. Maybe she will be lucky and have something to eat tonight. So you can see that she is concentrating by all means. Maybe there's something here by this drainage line. <laughs> brother, the lepers is very much difficult for them to attack people. So the thing is, all these animals, when I am in the vehicle, when seeing me, they think I am part of the vehicle. They see me with the vehicle as, an, as one object. So I am not afraid at all. So this leopard just got disappeared and here where I am is very much thick so I've got to try and see if I can have a, a, a little space to go in so that we can have a better sighting. So she is gone now deep in the dry, dry river bed. So I'm just going to keep following so until we see where she is leading us to. So this cat has got a cub 
called Talamba. Maybe Talamba is hiding somewhere in the area. So the rain has just stopped. I just want to quickly uh, fix something here. So I can see that uh, there is a little bit of a problem here with my vehicle. I just want to get off and fix something a little bit. So now let's go to David who is uh, driving at the moment trying to find something interesting for you this afternoon. Nice kids. It seems everything is going very well and I was showing you earlier the beautiful savanna of the Masai Mara Triangle but from a distance I have spotted a bird that is just walking on the ground there. Do you see that bird there? See how majestic she is? We call that bird the secretary bird. The secretary bird. See how majestic she is walking. It's very interesting how she got that name. Yaska so is beautiful looking. They've not, well, they're there, but sometimes it takes us a long time to see them. But sometimes you make a joke and you say, they walk like secretaries, you know, long time ago uh, here in Africa when girls would get jobs as secretaries, they would walk very majestically because secretarial jobs were very important. Now, this bird eats any reptile, reptile I'm talking about, lizards, for example, or even snakes. So they walk, that's exactly what she is looking for. And if she gets or, bounce, or you know, bumps into a snake or a lizard or a skink, she is going to use her feet and stamp onto it. Pop, 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 pop. And that's how she kills the snake or the lizard and then feeds on it. So as she walks like that, she also goes disturbing the grass. And if she disturbs the grass, something would, would just come up. Stephanie, well done. You said this is your favorite, but I agree with you. She is so beautiful, and especially Stephanie, if you see her fly, she flies like a small airplane. So well done to say she's your favorite bird, and to many people in Africa, it is. All birds in the world belong to particular families or groups. Now, as much as you see her walking on the ground, she is related to the eagles, like the American bald eagle. She doesn't have a bald head, but she is related to the eagles. So sometimes we call her the ground eagle. Some of the birds you can tell males from females just by looking at their colors, you know, like black and white or the black and the gray you see on this one. But this particular type of bird that we call a secretary bird, it is very difficult to tell the male from the female. They are very identical. She is basically looking for something to eat. And as much, you see, she goes, as much as she walks like that, she'll pick something very easily. Tanya, I would say from where we are, we are about 60 yards from where we are. 60 yards. So what we normally do now, we usually do ten animals and more so for birds, because if we get close to her, she is going to fly away, Tanya. And I thought we'll stay at a good distance for you to see it. Oh, sorry, Tanya. Uh, you ask how tall she is, and let me see. She is about, I would say, three, four feet. Actually, she's about three to four feet. That's her height, Tanya. My apologies. Three to four feet. And because of her height, she has the advantage of seeing what's happening on the ground. Let's give her three feet. And you can see we make a joke and say they are wearing black skirts. Very majestic when they walk. 
Ready, Starfire? All the birds in Africa will fly, including the secretary bird. It's only the ostrich that does not fly. And if you see her flying, she flies, I would say, like a caravan. You know, those small planes that we call Vans caravan. They'll always go, get the threshold, get the momentum, then take off. That's exactly how she flies. And on landing, she lands the same way. You see her landing and then she's taking the landing path slowly. And she doesn't hit the ground and stop there. She hits the ground and keeps moving just like a small plane. So Lady Starfire, they do fly. And they're some of the most beautiful birds to see them flying. But unlike, say, birds like eagles or vultures that will tend to glide, you know, in the air using heat thermos, the secretary bird will always keep flapping. I think either they're a bit too heavy or the wings are not designed to keep them gliding in the air. So they just have to keep flapping their wings. But more often than not, really Starfire, I'll tell you, oh boys and girls, this particular bird, you'll always see her on the ground. And as much as I said, she is a ground eagle, we say, or we give her the Latin name ground eagle, because she spends most of her time on the ground. But once down on the ground, on eating, they'll always go on top of trees where they do their nest or where they make their nest, either to roost or spend the night. You can see carefully she got some feathers hanging behind her head, black feathers. And long time ago, the secretaries who used, you know, in Africa, they used to put pens behind their head just to show everybody how fancy job they got as secretaries. beautiful sky there. You have been hearing me talking or saying we are in the Mara Triangle. The Mara Triangle is a game reserve that has three boundaries, just like a triangle. And one of the boundary or one side of that triangle is that hill that you see there. And that hill or mountain, we call them, the, is an escarpment actually, and we call it the Olololo Escarpment. Boys and girls, can you say that after me? Olololo. One more time. Yes, that's better. So Olololo escarpment is one arm of the triangle or one side of the Mara triangle. Then we are not very far from... A... Oh, very good. Olololo, very good. I'm not sure that's a tongue twister. Or it's for some people like us who sometimes, you know, don't make it right. Anyhow, that other side man who is showing you the camera, that direction is a country called... Tanzania and there's a national park that borders the Mara Triangle that's called Serengeti So there's a boundary between this country I am in Kenya and that other country called Tanzania and that is the other arm of the triangle Then there's a very famous river in Masui Mara Triangle in Serengeti that's called the Mara River and that forms the third arm of the triangle and that's how we end up by saying we're in the Mara Triangle Game Reserve how beautiful is that? And our secretary bird still continue walking. You can see her running. If she picks something that's running away, for example, an insect or a locust, she makes a quick move. And as it lands, she lands on it and very quickly kills it or subdues it rather using her feet. They got very strong feet. More often than not, they walk in twos, a male and a female. But I do not know today being a Saturday, the other one might have gone to the market. Not sure it's the male that went to the market or the female. You have to get something. Hopefully she'll be lucky to see her eat something. She keeps looking. Walks, disturbs the grass. Notice how tall her tail feather is. And that one gives them the balance. If they're running on the ground and they need to turn, it helps them like to be like a radar to, you know, just to steer them as they run. Because sometimes they choose to chase their food or prey on the ground. It's very unusual for, for, for the secretary birds to eat while flying. They'll always feed on the ground. Keep walking, Secretary Bad, keep feeding yourself, and let's take you across to South Africa again to Tristan with the leopard. 
Indeed, we are still with our leopard, and you can see he's now flopped back down completely once again and is having a really good sleep. But he looks super comfy, I must be honest. I'm a bit envious of him. He almost looks as though he's having a wonderful time having a bit of a rest. And I suppose if you're a cat in this weather, given that you've got a fur coat, it mustn't be that bad. And it also must be better than when it's 40 degree heat or, you know, 100 degree Fahrenheit heat. It must be much nicer in this weather. So Nancy, I mean, no, his coat is not waterproof, but it certainly will provide a bit of a buffer against the rain. So the water droplets will collect on the coat itself. If it rains hard enough, then they get very wet. And you can see their kind of coat, much like our hair, would be very much the same. Remember that their fur is very much like our hair in many respects. Um, but soft rain like we've had today, well, that won't really seep down into the skin. It will just create a bit of a wetness on the edges of the fur, and then he can groom that off. You'll often find after a bit of rain that that a leopard or any cat will spend some time using its tongue to kind of get rid of all the, the water that's on it and make sure that they keep themselves nice and dry and warm. So it, it's not 100% waterproof, but it definitely is better than just having no hair at all. So it's like us, you know, your face gets very wet as opposed to your hair. If it's raining, it takes a bit longer for your hair to get very wet for the water to actually get onto your scalp as opposed to your actual sort of forehead or your, or your cheeks. So it just depends on you know how much water it is really as to if it keeps water off him or not but it's not a waterproof coat it's not going to repel water like a water bucks coat where it's going to push water away from the the sort of body and unfortunately they get enough water on them they get very very wet and very drenched and they look a little bit like they're very unhappy when a lot of rain falls the whole coat goes all matted and it's not a very pretty sight. They don't look very happy at all when the rain falls like that. And it looks like, hopefully though, that some of the rain is now passed on. It's cleared up a little bit, which is good news. Arrest? Yes, they do have spots on their skin. So if you had to shave Hosanna now and take away all his fur, you will find little spots on his skin as well. So it, it does show um, on their skin when they are well, when the fur is taken away. And so the only reason we know that is because obviously there's often times where leopards, particularly in captivity in like zoos, have to be operated on and they'll get shaved and then you can actually see that there are spots where the f sort of skin is as opposed to just where the fur is. But he's obviously having a deep sleep because I can see his paws every now and then not twitching. So he's having a little bit of a sort of dream there. You can see his eyes are twitching, his paws are twitching. And that's always an indication that a cat is sleeping very, very well and that they are not having a sort of difficult time sleeping. I'm surprised though because there's lots of wind about and generally wind disturbs cats but he seems to be thoroughly fast asleep at the moment. Hosanna, has it been a long day already today? No, he's not even answering us. He's just having a good nap. He always looks cute when he's like this. You kind of can see his belly is just kind of going up and down as well. He's, even though it's so kind of cool this afternoon, you'll still see that he's breathing quite fast. And that's because he's eaten a lot. And so his stomach has swollen out, which means that it's pushing up against his lungs a little bit. And therefore, the amount of air that he can take in is a little bit less. And so that's why he's kind of breathing quite quickly. If it was very hot today, you would see that he would be breathing a lot faster than that. He would be almost kind of, his stomach would be bouncing up and down at a very quick rate and that would be obviously to try and kind of control heat as well as the fullness. Affy, yes, indeed they do. So big cats will often eat grass like a domestic cat or house cat will do. Um, you see it's quite regularly and even this male here, I've seen him eat grass quite often and they do it to try and kind of help cleanse their digestive system. Sometimes it'll even make them um, regurgitate and, and get sick. And sometimes that's because they've got hair or bone that they are not able to actually get out of their stomach. And so they just regurgitate it out. But you do see these wild cats, lion, leopard, cheetah, um, they will all eat um, grass from time to time. It's quite a common thing to see out here. You, you don't see it kind of every day, but every now and then you'll find that they do do it. What they'll also do, which is quite interesting, is if they have um, a bit of rain like we've had this afternoon, sometimes the grass will obviously get bits of water on it or droplets of water on it, and they'll actually kind of go along and they'll 
lick the grass as and, and kind of mouth the grass and they'll actually get the moisture off it itself and they'll try and kind of almost drink the water off the grass rather than having to walk all the way to the nearest water point, especially now in winter where the nearest water point's often quite far away. So, you know, they do do it from time to time, but at this stage, you know, I don't think he's going to be doing anything right now, whether it be grass or licking of water or anything like that. It seems as though he's going to have a really kind of good nap. Right. It is that time, though, I'm afraid, where we finish up for the day. It's been a wonderful time having you all with us. I hope that you enjoyed another edition of our Kids Safari. It's always nice to have younger minds join us out here in the wilderness. It's always important to educate all of you guys and to hopefully grow a love for nature. So I hope that you've had a really wonderful time. We've seen a lot of amazing things today between the two leopards and all the things up in the Masai Mara and even the Ellies. It's been quite wonderful. So from Sydney, David and myself, it's been, like I say, an absolute pleasure. And we'll see you next week at the same time in the same place.